Okay, so our last speaker for this last morning session is Auke, who will be talking about testing testers. Yes, that's right. Uh, and first of all, thanks, of course, to the organizers of, of Types. It's, uh, it's wonderful to be here again. Um, yeah, a couple of disclaimers to my talk. Um, I'm not going to present some big research uh, project that I'm working on. It's just a small observation, which I thought was neat. It's nothing world changing. Um, however, I think, I think it is, it is, um, there is a relevant contribution here because it's the first time I think that um, uh, a specific type theoretic technique uh, can, like, that we're applying that to working software. Um, so, uh, another disclaimer, we're going to test software and found no bugs. So what does testing normally uh, look like? So normally we have some kind of uh, method that we want to test the correctness of, and, and maybe the, the method that we want to uh, investigate is the plus operation. And it should certainly satisfy, for instance, a correctness criterion that, um, that's, that zero is a left unit of, 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 the, of the addition. Um, so how can we phrase this as a property in property testers? Well, we would have something like a, 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 a function which takes an arbitrary natural number n and checks whether 0 plus n equals n. And so what, what we have defined is a function from the natural numbers to, uh, to the booleans. And so what I want to say with this um, perhaps meaningless explanation of something so simple is that what I want to capture in this talk as a property is anything that goes from, a, a, from some domain, from some range of, of elements to, to the booleans. Uh, for me, that, that's what a property means. And indeed, our specific property of checking that zero is a left unit for addition is, a, I would say, a property on the naturals. Um, even if the thing that we're really testing is nothing about the naturals, but the plus operation over there. Right, so um, what do we do with such properties? We want to, we want to evaluate them for, for their correctness. Uh, and so then that means that at the end of the day, we want to get uh, a result of, of, this, of this validation, and it can either be uh, a success, which means that we didn't find any counterexamples, or it can be a failure when we did find a counterexample. And so in this context, uh, a property tester for me is a function that takes uh, a property and gives you a result which is either success or failure. Uh, indeed, quick check, uh, I have managed to squeeze into this straight jacket I must say that this is a bit of an idealization. Um, for instance, because quick check normally uh, uses uh, pseudo randomness um, and additionally has IO, but in this case, not in any way that actually influences the computation. And so it just, it just about fits. Um, the thing to observe, another thing to observe here for, for quick check in particular is that it doesn't decide validity of properties, it only semi-decides invalidity of properties. It tries to find a counterexample. If it doesn't find a counterexample, it outputs success. But seeing success as the output doesn't mean that the property is strictly speaking true for all inputs. So the key question in this talk is, can we really decide validity of some properties sometimes? In other words, can we, can we get ourselves in a situation where if we get a success output value, that the property is actually valid for all inputs? And there is an obvious case here, which is if our domain is finite, if we're looking at a finite uh, collection of, if, if we're looking at a finite range. And then the key contribution here is, uh, are there other cases? Are there non-finite cases? And the answer is surprisingly, or perhaps surprisingly, yes. And to understand why there, like why, like to, to, to see why we might, um, why we might encounter such non-finite cases, I'm going to slightly rephrase our question of wanting to, ev wanting, to, um, wanting to validate properties to the notion of searchable types. Um, so rather than, uh, so uh, uh, we, we get this, this decidable uh, uh, validation of properties for, for, for uh, ranges which are searchable. And so searchable here means that uh, so a, a is a searchable type when, uh, for, when we can find uh, when we can be find, uh, for that type, um, a map which is called find, and um, if so, we this this map find for a given property or for a given map to the booleans. Oh, there's a capital B here missing. Um, uh, when like 
if this P is, is uh, falsified anywhere, then find can give you one of those counter examples. Does this definition make sense? Any questions? I see some nods, so I hope it's okay. Um, right, and so yes, indeed, there are, uh, so there are searchable types, namely the finite ones. Uh, and there also exist non-finite examples. And that's not claiming that we can somehow enumerate an infinite domain uh, in finite time. Um, I'll show on the next slide how we can do it, although I don't want to go into too much detail into it. If you think this is counterintuitive that these, type, these kinds of uh, non-finite non types, uh, searchable types exist, I completely agree. This is completely non uh, counterintuitive. It's existing work uh, that uh, I don't have justice to cover entirely in this uh, in this talk. So uh, I'm I'm asking you to accept this pre-established and surprising fact. Regardless, here's a very quick version of it. Depending on how quickly you can read Haskell. So here's here's um, here's an example, namely for uh, the key type of the remainder of this talk, which is uh, the naturals to the boolean. So this function type of naturals to the booleans is a searchable type. And here is my here is an implementation of find. I mean, there are, there are many implementation, many ways to write to write a find function here, uh, but this is one of them. And and to to note about this type, like to note about the type of find is not that it <laughs> always finds a counterexample natural to booleans, but it finds and it finds a function natural to booleans such that if there is if if there is anything in uh, the input property that falsifies it, then then the output here certainly does. Um, so it's a total function, even if even if the property was actually true everywhere. Another thing to observe is that this doesn't in any way uh, enumerate this infinite domain. En enumerating all functions from the naturals to booleans is neither possible nor uh, sufficient because we would still have uh, infinitely many uh, elements to, to consider. This technique of infinite search has been uh, published already a couple of years ago in, uh, in a Haskell library on Hackage, and there are at the moment zero other Haskell libraries that are depending on this. So clearly this is an underused technique and um, <laughs> Something that I think a lot of Haskell programmers, and I think some people in the types community as well, are aware of, um, but somehow it hasn't come to fruition. So this is my minor attempt at fixing that. So how do we use this searchability? How do we make, how do we take such a searchable type? In this case, as, I'm, as I said, we're going to focus on natural to the booleans and, and make it work for our uh, property testing. So here's what we do: we we define a, a a new property tester, um, which is called exhaustive check. And it takes an arbitrary property um, and uh, decides whether the property is valid on all inputs. And so the, the trick is just to simply compute this probe from uh, like using the find function. And then we can evaluate the property on that probe. And, 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 and then we have the desired uh, condition that it can only output success if the property is actually validated everywhere. Now, this is really nice, except that uh, in practice, the thing that we like to property test on is not functions from the naturals to the booleans. In practice, the, the kind of thing that we like to property test on is, well, I mean, overly simplifying a little bit, but uh, th types that are isomorphic to the naturals, I mean, to, to be frank. Um, so like you wanna you wanna do like uh, binary trees or like uh, uh, I don't know right? like maybe strings uh, uh, stuff like that so things that are that are isomorphic to the to the naturals and certainly function spaces are not the kind of thing that we like to property test on. So the question is: Is there a realistic scenario in which uh, in which um, it, it, like is, can we somehow make use of this in a realistic scenario? So then there's the Second key idea here, which is to study a higher order problem, not to, uh, st to, to study the, the correctness of, of, of arbitrary pr properties, but the correctness of other property testers. Um, and the reason that this works is that a property te uh, tester for the naturals, um, which is the thing that we really like to use, takes as its input a property on naturals, which is uh, isomorphic to um, uh, 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 naturals to the booleans, and so if we could if we could somehow evaluate this property tester on all such 
um, uh, properties on the naturals, well, then, then, we, then we can learn something about it and, and phrase correctness properties and, and decide those correctness properties for a property tester. So um, on the last slide, I already developed how we can make use of this uh, exhaust, exhaustive, exhaustive property testing. Uh, the thing that I haven't developed it, uh, yet is what properties we might possibly phrase for uh, our idealized property testers. So here's one example of a property you might want to, uh, might want to have for a given property tester. I already discussed that a property tester, is, well, it can either return success if it wasn't able to invalidate the property, or it can return uh, failure if it found a counterexample. And one thing we should certainly have is that if it did find uh, a failure, if it did find a counterexample, then that thing that it claimed it found, it better actually be a counterexample. It better actually be a point where the property doesn't hold. And that's what this property uh, expresses. So it takes an arbitrary property tester as its input. Let me see if I can point at that. So it takes an arbitrary property tester. It takes an arbitrary property because we're, we're, we're uh, like, uh, yeah, it takes an arbitrary property and, and, and then does that evaluation. So here are the ingredients that we have so far. We have an exhaustive way to uh, evaluate, pro like we, we can evaluate some, some uh, we can uh, decide some properties using an exhaustive property check, uh, property tester. We have a, a pre-given uh, property tester, namely uh, uh, an idealized version of quick check. Um, and we have a property that we want a quick check to satisfy. So let's, you know, let's run this program. So here we go, we run the exhaustive property tester on the stuff, like on, 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 the, on, on those two things. And what's the result gonna be? Success. No, that's good news, I would say. Uh, and, and just to emphasize this once again, I'm not, so we, we really know that now that if you use, uh, I mean, in some idealized setting, of course, we know that if you use uh, quick check in an idealized uh, setting on properties on the naturals, we know that it always satisfies the property that if it finds a counterexample, then it actually is a counterexample. I mean, maybe not a super surprising result, but, but it's, it's something that we haven't exhaustively tested before. Um, right, so here's another property you might want quick check to satisfy. Uh, quick check has this uh, feature that it that it uh, so it it, it always like it, it quick check just evaluates properties on various inputs and you might expect that at least it always tries some some basic things right like it always tries the number zero to test if a property is satisfied on the number zero so here's here's a property expressing that quick check always evaluates a given property on the number zero so let's see if it's satisfied uh, actually, it's, no, uh, it's, not, it's not because it just tries some pseudo-random inputs, and in particular, it doesn't always test zero. So this is something that, that you can uh, uh, compute using, using this exhaustive uh, technique. Here's another property you might expect quick check to satisfy. Quick check has this feature where it tries to minimize or reduce counterexamples, where like, if it finds a counterexample, it tries to reduce it to well, what the code considers smaller. And so in, in particular for the naturals, it's literally smaller in sense of the ordering of, of the natural numbers. Um, so you might, you, might ex you might expect that if it finds a counter example I, then all the other, like up until I, there, like the, the property should be satisfied. This is expressing that. So is this property satisfied? Actually it's not because this reduction of counterexamples is like limited in depth. So apparently, if you if you if you do this, like if you if if you pass it a property which is valid for the first fifty items, but then the fifty-first one is false, then 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 it then it says uh, uh, that then it it doesn't minimize it all the way. All right, conclusions. And I see that I have my timing right, so I'm happy about that. Uh, the two key ideas here is that we get uh, exhaustive uh, validity checking for ex for searchable types, which I haven't seen uh, exploited before, and and I haven't seen searchable types being used in in, in practical software before. Um, the second key idea is that, um, uh, that 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 we can actually make use of that for for the higher order problem of uh, validating property systems themselves. We did do that, and we didn't encounter any any uh, any surprising results uh, so yeah that's that's the, <laughs> the un like the unsurprising part of my talk 
Then very, very, very quickly, I want to, th want to say something about my day job, which is working for Hasura. Uh, we do write Haskell in production code and writing a data access solution, a database product. We are hiring Haskell engineers and others, so if you are interested uh, or are considering that, uh, please talk to me today or just drop me an email. I'm always happy to talk. Finally, thanks for your attention and enjoy the rest of Types 22. Thank you. I mean, an alternative to testing the tester is verifying the tester. Yes. And I'm just wondering, is there, can you imagine some kind of property which is somehow very hard to verify? I mean, you could have implemented the quick check in Agda and then Agda's type checker would verify these properties that you tested or might verify. But is there some, so what's the advantage of using exhaustive testing compared to uh, formalization? Yeah, sure. Well, um, this is, so I don't know if, so if, if we accept that it is possible to implement quick check in Agda, then there's no, there's no, like they have the same, so the thing <laughs> is they have the same amount of guarantee, these two techniques, but this one is substantially more, uh, uh, more, more uh, it uses substantially less advanced techniques in terms of the underlying language, because everything here is done in Haskell, regardless it has the same uh, level of guarantee. Um, so is that an advantage? Uh, well, it's simpler and does the same thing, so I think that's nice. Yeah, so uh, an, an important aspect of Martin Escardo's, uh, Martin Escardo's seemingly impossible functional program is that it doesn't just surge an infinite set, but it surges very fast. <laughs> I mean, it's, it, it's, a, it's an extremely efficient program. And it, um, in the blog post on the seemingly impossible functional program, there are a lot of examples of this. I mean, the efficient implementation is like, hundred times more efficient than the naive implementation and so on. So I was wondering if you, when you were testing these <coughs> testers, have you run into any problems of efficiency and have you considered like the uh, more efficient versions of the program and so on? Yeah, so what, what I demonstrated on, I don't know, slide four or something, let's, let's quickly jump back to that, right? Um, Right, this is, the, this is the most naive implementation, the shortest one, uh, because yeah. I wanted, well, both to keep my own development and this presentation as simple as possible. It was completely adequate for the properties that I presented, which are also very rudimentary and, and unsurprising, so uh, it was not necessary to dive into this. But yeah, there's a, there's a beautiful zoo of, of, of complexity of, of uh, how quickly you can do this exhaustive and, and, and searching uh, of, of types, yes. So, so for your purposes, the naive implementation was fine? Yes. Okay. Thanks. Um, so the related question, so did you, or can you get some uh, insights on this, on uh, when you're testing a tester, what properties is it actually calling this tester with, right? Could, and then how many, how many times is it calling a particular tester, or is that the wrong question? So I, I, I think I understand your question, I'm, uh, so, um, I, 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 let me try to rephrase it. So when we when we try to test a tester, then we're running it on various input properties. Um, but the way that, it, like you see, you see it over here as part of this definition of find, it's somehow defined in a recursive way. So um, you see here that the 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 output age that we're defining is defined in terms of the the find itself, um, and so that means for us practically that in a sense there's also this recursive process going on when you evaluate the tester uh, which in a sense means that the tester is calling itself because of like in our setup um, so due to our functional uh, approach this all works out uh, the higher order approach it all works out to answer the question like like so does that so this means that we're not so it's not strictly speaking true that we're <coughs> only evaluating the tester on one property. I mean, this, this property itself is defined in terms of, you know, this tester and then itself and then a tester and then itself. So it's not, like it's not such a clear, so it's, good, it's a good question with not such a clear answer. That's, 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 the, short, that's the short version. Right, and I guess it rel relies essentially on the laziness of Haskell. 
Uh, no, I don't. Well, I mean, laziness of functions in general, I suppose. I, I haven't, I haven't thought about that too carefully. Thanks. Okay, one last question. If I understand correctly, all of your quick check tests are total functions, and it's really crucial that everything in is a total function. Otherwise, you can't actually verify properties. Is that right? Um, I think the answer is yes, but uh, again, I haven't thought about it uh, in too much detail. Yeah, so so for me, uh, uh, for me, uh, the definition of a property is a total function to the booleans from some range. Yes. Okay. I wanted to ask whether you have any intuition what happens if you partialize at some point and allow partial functions, but I think you answered the, the, yeah. the question. Thank you. Okay. So let's let's thank the speaker again.